It absolutely has been a long journey, as you'd expect, to bring a game of AFL football to China. I think what we've sort of seen is how do we actually take advantage of this opportunity that we've been presented and how do we build a strategy around that. We're a very big sport, we're the largest sport in Australia. But at the same time too, if you look at our size and our scope, we're only 25 million. And so in many respects for us, our expansion into China is really looking at new fans and new audiences. I think the second point which is also really important is how do we actually connect back into the Chinese communities back in Australia? So 1.2 million Chinese Australians, uh, according to the 2016 census, uh, you couple that with 1.4 million tourists, and on top of that 170,000 international students, it's a market bigger than Western Australia, Northern Territory, Tasmania and the ACT combined. Probably in about 18 months is looking at talent identification. So is there that opportunity? Everyone wants to find a Yao Ming, but if we haven't built the foundation, it's just tokenism. So it's those two parts and probably unassailably, it's really around looking at the commercial opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the brands that are going global, the brands that have got significant opportunities, we see China and the Australia-China relationship as really a, a fertile ground within which to look and explore commercial opportunities. We want to win premierships, we want to invest back into our community. How do we do that? Well, that commercial dollar and those partnerships are not necessarily always going to come from a local domestic market. And obviously China is one of the fastest growing economies, but it's still the second biggest. America is still the largest for now. Why? China, I guess the pivot to China, do you think, for the AFL and the US growth market never, well, hasn't sort of come? One, geographically, that's where we sit. So China is our largest trading partner. So it makes sense for us to be working relationships. We think about you know, all the Chinese migration that dates back into the 1840s in Australia. There's a natural synergy with what we're doing in that space. You know, I'm married to an American um, woman, so I, I understand American sport particularly well. I don't see that as the right environment to try and bring our game over there. They're firmly entrenched with what they're doing. And there's so much more. It's more than just a game with China. You know, it's about the trade relations, about government relations. We now look at the Festival Australia coming on board and all the different facets of what that brings to the table. You know, it's an exciting space. The AFL's just announced a new office yeah. in China, so obviously yeah. trying to step that up. I think at the moment it's, it's still just one game a season. Yeah. So with the new office, and is there any sort of new plans to sort of scale up in China? Yes. So for us, we've probably got a three-phase approach. One is really looking at how do we build an audience. Currently we're um, on free-to-air uh, Guangzhou TV and Shanghai Media Group. We have a cumulative audience of about 24 million in China, which is pretty good. And some of our games actually rated better than Friday night football. So how do we grow that? How do we look at digital broadcasting? How do we look at streaming? Uh, whether it's Alibaba, Tencent, NetEase, how do we get onto those platforms? So that's certainly the next approach. We need to find money in order to build those audiences. So that's really what we're looking at. Um, beyond that, I think then it's how do we look at um, telling that story? If you look back five years ago, the AFL was a men's competition. Um, and the AFL is obviously more than just the elite competition. It's also about the code. But we've also got AFLW, we've got AFLX. As we get better and as we get stronger up here in China, then that will assist Port Adelaide in terms of what they're doing. Uh, it may be other clubs, um, other competitions. So AFLX, which is a very um, new sport um, in Australia, how do we use that and is there an opportunity um, given that the field restrictions and the size and the format and the timing might be um, more accessible to audiences here, we might be able to play a three-city tour, whether it's you know Chengdu, Guangzhou, and Beijing or Shanghai. Um, even Hong Kong, we'd love to look at those opportunities. So how do you think about the allocation of investment? Because obviously, the AFL is trying to grow uh, the sport from the grassroots up, mm. and in states like Tasmania, and perhaps struggling yeah. more clubs that are struggling a bit more. But then you've got also got to put this. You know, choosing to put this money in China. So how do, how do you balance those? Yeah, So and, and, and it's a good question and it's one that I think a lot of AFL uh, followers back home uh, question. And I mean, the reality for us is that with the exception of a few roles, um, everyone else who's pulled into the project team uh, to deliver the game is actually doing that on top of their substantial roles, whether that's in ticketing, whether it's in uh, integrity and security or, or events. So in terms of the cost for us for the league, 
there, it, it really is sort of, um, it's neutral. And I think I read in the press that um, actually financially it's now break even or even better? Even better. Yep. No, it's, it's uh, plus about $300,000 for this year. We're already sold out. We sold out weeks and weeks ago. Other sports might be looking at this like, and, and wondering how they can do it. What, what sort of advice would you give other sports or clubs looking at China? Yep. You can't do it alone. That, that's the, the, the simplest advice. You've got to have great partners around you to, to bounce off and to work together towards a common goal. We've been very, very lucky um, with you know, the, the government support that we've received from the South Australian government, Vic government, federal government, Tourism Australia, uh, through the Festival of Australia as well. You've got to have a long-term strategy behind it. Your first couple of years are going to be pretty tough. You know, out of 10 conversations that you have, one might actually be fortuitous. So don't give up and you know, really find a network of people working towards a common goal. That's how you get there.